Hey guys, it's Johnny FD, and welcome to module seven of my free dropshipping course. This is uh, dropshiplab.com if you want to sign up for it. And yeah, I thought I'd move and change it up a bit. <laughs> There's a gardener outside. But today's topic is something that a lot of people have questions about, and it is a very serious uh, topic, an important topic. But at the same time, I think way too many people spend too much time stressing about this before they even get started. And that's why this is module seven and not right in the beginning module one. But obviously, uh, if you are just going through this course first to get all the info and then to go back and start building the store, this is a good option as well. So feel free to share this video with your friends who are that type where you know they're gonna stress about all the legalities and the technical parts and, you know, and that prevents them from getting started in the first place. So the two big questions that people, you know, ask about this topic is business structure and taxes. So we're gonna go over both of those today, both for Americans as well as non-Americans, how to structure your dropshipping store legally, business-wise, do you need an LLC, do you need a company, do you do it under your name, uh, you know, do I have to register it, do I get a state uh, tax ID number, reseller certificate, all that stuff, as well as taxes. Uh, do you have to collect taxes, do you have to pay taxes, do you have to register for this, and also, uh, the big question is, you know, if you're non-American but you want to sell in the U.S. market, what do you actually do? So first, I'm going to start with what do you do as an American if you're selling in America? This same information will apply for if you're, you know, British and you're selling in the U.K. If you're Australian, you're selling in Australia. And it's going to be slightly different depending on which country you're from and even what state you're from. So this is general broad knowledge. It is up to you to dive in a little bit deeper with your specific state and your specific country for two reasons. One is I'm not a tax expert in Australia. <laughs> and second, even if I spent all my time figuring that out, things change so fast. So you have to figure it out for yourself. You have to treat dropshipping as you would any other real business. If you think of dropshipping as just some get rich quick overnight you know, thing you can set up, you're doing it wrong and you're probably not gonna be very successful. If you think of dropshipping and starting a dropshipping store as the same as if you were gonna start a physical store and you're gonna actually build out a retail location, you know, get all the business permits to do that, hire uh, employees, get the inventory, do all that stuff, then you have the right mindset of getting in, but it would just end up costing you a lot less money because you don't have to you know, spend all the money you know, building on a location, you can just build a website. As, as I showed you in the last video. So let's get started. All right, so when I first started with my dropshipping store in 2013, things haven't really changed that much since, but basically I did it as a sole proprietor. What does that mean? That means I'm selling under my name. I'm not spending the money or the time to create a formal company like an LLC or something. Same thing applies in other countries. You basically just, you're a one person business, you just start selling. The things that you will need though, is you need some kind of uh, tax ID number, so you can actually just use your social security number as your tax ID number. It's a way for the government to track how much revenue you're, you're getting so you can pay taxes on it later. For Americans, you could also apply for something called an EIN number, all right? Uh, and all that is, is an employee identification number. It basically just replaces your social security number so you don't have to give out your social security number through email or through to a bunch of suppliers. I would recommend doing this route. It's free, it takes five minutes. I'll have a link to it below, or you can just Google you know, EIN number, uh, if you're from a different country, you can just you know Google um, you know tax ID number for Australians or or whatever it is. The second thing that you're going to need is a state resellers certificate, and all this is is a way that you can legally buy products at wholesale from your supplier. So the way that we do drop shipping, and the way that Anton taught me, is you don't want to pay taxes on something to sell it and then have to pay taxes again. There's just no reason for that. And also, the government doesn't you know, require you to do that. It's, it's like if you had owned a restaurant or something, and you went to Costco, as a business member, you can buy things at wholesale and not pay taxes on items that you plan on reselling or to use to then resell. So you need a, basically a piece of paper or a digital piece of <laughs> paper saying, hey, I'm, not using this for myself, so I don't. I shouldn't have to pay uh, state income tax. I mean, I shouldn't have to pay state sales tax on this, or VAT, or you know whatever you're from, because you're not consuming yourself. 
you're going to be passing that to someone else. To get that, it dif differs per state. When I started, I was in California, so I just Googled California resale reseller certificate, and I signed up an account with, with California and basically just gave them my information and said, this is my, you know, what I plan to do. I plan to resell products. Uh, they issued me a printable form, and I forward that to my suppliers whenever I uh, decide uh, I, I want to open an account, I want to become an authorized dealer for them. They just need that piece of paper. You know, the suppliers honestly don't really care that much. They just need to have it. It's like something they need for their paperwork so they can legally sell you products at a wholesale price. Now, here's where it gets a little bit complicated. So let's say uh, you don't want to have to collect tax from, you know, or like from all these different places or the, the supplier that you're using is in, you know, Texas or something. It, this is where it kind of depends. Uh, some suppliers will say, you know, okay, Johnny, you like, thank you for the California, you know, resale certificate. I also need one for Texas. I never had to do that. I would just tell them like, no, I'm not, you know, I don't have a Nexus in Texas, just use my California one. And they're okay with it. Some suppliers will, you know, insist that you have a one for, for their state as well. If you do try to sign up for that. And at the end of the day, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, it's not that hard to get, but it, it also just kind of depends. I, I, th I honestly think most suppliers don't actually understand the, the tax laws either. But here's the, the honest truth at the end of the day. Unless you're doing over a million dollars a year, nobody cares. I, I guarantee it. Uh, I was selling you know, quite a bit in California. I was making you know, 200, $50,000 a year in sales in California, and I was collecting state tax for them, even though I wasn't really sure if I needed to. It, the, the rules are so unclear. Like, I was based in, Cal you know, I was a California resident when I started. A lot of my customers are in California, and my supplier was in California. So I was like, okay, I should probably be collecting California uh, state tax. But per city, it's different. So it, like, in some cities, it's 8%. Some cities, it's 8.25%. And I tried to get this information. I contacted California and basically they were just like, yeah, just do your best. And I said, okay. So I just set like a flat rate of like 8.25%. I started, I would only collect taxes from people in California. Uh, so if someone bought from another state, I just wouldn't, it would be 0% tax. And then I just held that money in a separate bank account, you know, hopefully one that earned some interest. And at the end of the year, I contacted the state of California and said, hey, I got this money. Well, what should I do? And they said, oh yeah, just send it to us. And I was like, okay, like, do I need to fill out some forms, do some kind of return, like show you proof of how much I sold? And they're like, no, 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 just send us the money. And I'm like, really? Like, you just want me to send you money and like, you don't need any information? They're like, yeah, we don't need anything. So I sent it to them and I did this for three, four years. Every year, I just sent them like a random amount that I had collected, never asked for anything. And at the end of the day, what it is is, Unless you're a big business, they don't care. Like they can come and audit you. If, so if you don't collect it, you might get screwed. Uh, but even then, I think if you just forgot to collect it or you just didn't do it, they're probably not gonna come after you and say, hey, you didn't collect this money, so now you owe it. It was more kind of just a, like do your best kind of thing. So this is where things get kind of complicated. Uh, I moved to Texas legally uh, in 2016, I think, 2017. And then my supplier was in Oregon and my customers are in like New York. So I didn't collect any sales tax for them. So if you're in that situation, you know, you probably don't really need to collect sales tax because you don't really have a nexus there. And a nexus just means like a physical presence there. Is your supplier there? Are your customers there? Or, and are you there? If you're physically not from that state, and your supplier is not from that state, you probably don't need to collect sales tax. But remember, this stuff changes all the time. This is why when you used to buy things on Amazon, it was never uh, any sales tax. And then all of a sudden, they fought, they fought, they fought, and they have to start collecting some. But even then, they only did that because Amazon is so big. There's still plenty of smaller internet retailers that just don't collect sales tax at all. And that is actually an upper hand because things become cheaper through you. So. I wish I can give you a, a clear answer, but the answer is if you're just starting out and you're not doing a million dollars of sales, just do your best because nobody cares. You just need the, the, a reseller certificate from hopefully the, the state that you're based out of and that should be enough.
Next is, what do you do at the end of the year? How do you pay taxes on this? And the nice thing is, it's actually pretty easy. So basically, even though you're a business owner, the way that Shopify bills you, because they're collecting all the money for you and then sending it to you, is basically through a 1099 form. And it was kind of nice at the end of the year, you know, I get a 1099 form that says I made $246,000 in sales. But then I also have all my credit card receipts from when I paid for shipping, paid for advertising, paid for my, uh, the inventory itself or the, the product itself through my supplier. And that was, you know, close to, you know, it was like a hundred something thousand dollars, uh, close to 200,000 even. So basically I gave all this information to my accountant and they said, okay, it looks like you had 250,000 in revenue. And then you had, you know, $180,000 in expenses. So your actual, uh, yearly like income was $70,000. And then I wrote off a lot of things too. Like every time I would tra travel for a business conference, like the Nomad Summit, <laughs> or I would travel, you know, to somewhere to look at suppliers in Thailand or somewhere else, I would just write those off as business expenses. And end of the day, as a location independent entrepreneur, there are so many tax breaks. On top of that, being outside of the US for 330 days a year, you don't have to pay any uh, federal income tax on the first $106,000 you make. There's more information about that in uh, my other videos or you can ask me in the comments below. But yeah, at the end of the day, there's so many tax breaks as an entrepreneur, so it ends up working out really well. The next big question is, do you need to create an LLC or some kind of you know, S corporation or something, do you just do it in your name? The short answer is, the nice thing about dropshipping is you don't have that much liability. You know, you're not the one manufacturing the product, you're not even shipping the product, you're never even touching the product, you're basically a website. And that doesn't mean that, you know, nobody can ever sue you for anything, because in the US at least, you know, people sue for all the stupidest reasons. But in general, unless your net worth is over a million dollars, or even over, you know, say half a million dollars, it's probably not worth your effort to try to protect your liability, because it's, it's not a, you know, like if I was if I was making like something you know kombucha or something and people were drinking it oh yeah I would get some kind of insurance I would definitely have an LLC because I want to protect myself people are you know can physically are consuming your items they might break the the glass and they might cut themselves and try to sue you but when drop shipping something there's so many other people like involved in it I wouldn't personally worry about it uh, so if you have a net worth of over half a million dollars yeah ask your Ask your lawyer, you know, you can, you probably have an LLC ready to put it under that. If you're just starting out like I was and you don't have anything to get sued for anyways, just do it under your name. And the big, big question is, Johnny, what if I am from England, but I want to sell in the US, how do I do that? Or I'm from Zimbabwe and I really want to sell in Australia. The answer to that is it's possible. I've met people who have done it. There are plenty of people who, in Anton's course who have done it and they've outlined how they've done it, but it's also complicated. It's exactly the same process as if you wanted to start any business in the US or any business in Australia and as a foreigner. The things that you'll need is some kind of tax ID number, which is actually pretty easy to get even as a foreigner. But then you would all, you, to get that reseller license, that's a little bit more complicated if, if you can't prove that, that you have a physical presence there probably need to get a physical address there. And then the third thing you need is a US bank account. Uh, that is actually pretty easy to get if you physically have been in the US and you fly to the US and you can open a business, a bank account while you're there. You don't even need a business account. You can actually open a, a private bank account and do it through that. But th those are the things you need. And if you wanna go through the process of that, it is 100% possible. I've now met a ton of people who have done it. My German uh, business partner has created a US store all on his own with no help from me. And so I know it's possible. However, if you ask him how he's done it, he's like, do you have four hours to spare? So ask yourself these, these questions. One is, do I need to sell in the US or do I need to sell in the foreign market? Can I sell in my own country? Because I guarantee that if people are buying things online in your country, they can buy it from you. And even though dropshipping isn't popular yet, that's probably a good thing. You probably have less competition. I'll talk about uh, more about this in future videos, but that is kind of the gist of it, is yes, it's possible. Uh, and other people have done it, so you can read you know, 
how they've done it. And it doesn't matter if it's opening a, a pizza restaurant, creating an app, creating, you know, selling on Amazon or selling on, uh, through drop shipping on Shopify store. It's the same process and the information is out there. If you're a member of Anton's course, just do a search in there. There's people who have outlined the whole thing, uh, but uh, I'm not gonna be able to individually help you with that. So best of luck. <laughs> it is possible though, I, I, would, I would tell you that. So yeah, I hope uh, this answered the majority of your questions. I'm sure you're gonna have some specific ones. Feel free to ask in our private members Facebook group. If you haven't signed up for it yet, uh, make sure you signed up for the course at dropshiplab.com or just go on Johnny FD, search for uh, my free dropshipping course. There's links to it in there. Share this video with your friends and ask questions in that group and help each other out because you know, if you're from Australia, you can probably help out someone else's from Australia better than I can. Uh, but I promise you the information's out there and I promise you, you don't have to overthink it. It's actually a lot more simple than most people assume it is. Uh, and it's worth it at the end of the day. Starting any business is, is complicated. If you wanna start a pizzeria in your hometown, you're gonna to have to jump through some hoops to get some permits. Same thing with online business and with drop shipping. Uh, and this is why it, it prevents some people from getting started. And, it, and that's why there's always room for people who are willing to go through the process. And at the end of the day, you know, if you are from Zimbabwe and you can break into the US market and start selling in the US, it's a, probably a very lucrative uh, business because your return is gonna be really, really good compared to maybe what you can sell in your home country. However, on the flip side, in, if, you, if you do it in your home country and there's not that much competition, you, know, you have a head start from everyone else. So there's pros and cons to each, uh, but hopefully this video helped. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this. Uh, subscribe for the email list at dropshiplab.com if you haven't already. And yeah, forward this to a friend uh, and help each other out. See you guys in the next video. Bye guys.